bring us back to where you were when it was like you and a hundred clients was just you and like two or three people. Or like I had a, does, a I had a team of like? virtual assistants of about thirty mm. ish, and uh, I didn't know anything about hiring and management. So like I can't even tell you just like how many horrible mistakes I made at that point. But like every aspect of that business was chaotic. Let's just mm. say that. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was kind of just like, and I'm sure some of you guys can relate to this. Even if you don't have a hundred clients, you can have this with five or ten. But it was like putting out fires, just like mm -hmm. constantly. Like I, I, I must have checked my email fifty or hundred times a day. Like I, just, I must. You just keep it open. Yeah, right? yeah. And like, you're always like, oh, it's been ten minutes. Checking it, checking it. And you feel like yeah. you have to respond to everything. And it was. Uh, um, I very rarely get emails from my clients at all mm. anymore, and that's kind of amazing when you think about that. So was this client conversation or overabundance of client conversations, right? Was that because of like there was problems with the product and delivery or is that because like the the team kept kicking stuff to you or is that because you didn't set the tone correctly with the clients like you didn't say hey we're going to meet once a month and that's it like what was the big reason why yes yes and yes to all, all your things <laughs> <laughs> um I, you know and and I, I think a lot of people doing facebook ads because i do a, a lot of stuff with facebook ads now can relate to this is i just assumed in the beginning if I made people money back, mm -hmm. that everything would take care of itself. Like you paid me a thousand and you were getting 10,000. And I told you this story in our little preamble, but it's a really great example for understanding this because we also build intangible things for people. So where I'm at in Mexico now, uh, they're building a bunch of beachfront houses and a lot of like doctors and lawyer types in this kind of area. Yep. And there was a guy, my neighbor, and I said to him, oh, you, you know, you bought this house. How was that? And he, he decided to go on this tirade and said, it was the worst fucking experience of my life. Hmm. And, I, and I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, first of all, I saw it online, so I bought it sight unseen. Mm -hmm. And so I just wired like 220 grand or something like that to some guy in Mexico, and I couldn't reach anybody for two weeks. Nobody would like return my phone call. And then eventually they sent me a contract, and of course, it's in Spanish. I don't speak any Spanish. So I got to get a translator before I can even understand the legal. And for six months, I kept trying to get updates and nothing happened. Mm. And, and then eventually they, I came down and my house was built perfectly. And so when you think about that, they, on the results and delivery, they actually did a perfect job. Yep. But it took me a lot of years to realize 50% of what we do is actually the communication. It was that part that was like this so, so lacking. This little chasm of unknown is where like our clients yeah. freak the F out so much. This is like a constant thing across all yeah. client and customer relationships. Like this little, I paid you money and then you have this like regret, like fear. And then, oh, we got it happy and it's done. And it's so strong that like Uber is like, yo, we are going to update you by the second as soon as you order something. Yeah. Amazon is like, you are going to get notice notifications every 15 minutes yeah because and you really want go on i was just gonna say amazon's a perfect example like it's in the box we're shipping it it's it's on its way here's the tracking like they let you know where it's going on the journey and way back in the day i remember my grandfather talking about he would order stuff from catalog send money as a kid like two dollars for a hat or whatever it was and then nothing for six weeks and you check the mailbox every single day right and the, the relationship has evolved to as soon as I have spent money with you, I am expecting some kind of deliverable. Either it's homework, either it's an update, some kind of thingy. As soon as we implemented that into our, our agency and our deliverables onboarding docs, our clients calm down. Like yeah. we had like 36 to 48 hours, like it's going to be okay. Fill out your form, no big deal. <laughs> when we didn't have that, I had people pay and then message me 30 minutes later saying, where's the stuff? I'm like, it's a campaign. I'm building it out, like it said, but like they didn't know, yeah, yeah. right? So you cross that chasm of uncertainty. Did you use like an, like did you use like an onboarding form or survey to fill that out, or like how did you deal with with this little break in that client narrative? Um, well, for us, like part of what we do, and this kind of gets into a deeper concept of retention. Like obviously, I, I found there's four things with retentions. Obviously, results are part of it, but I used to think mm -hmm. if you just got results. Everything like if you get the 10 ROS a ROAS on Facebook ads, you're gonna stay forever. And then there's thing worse than a client fires you after you're getting them 10 to one on your money. And yeah. You're like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. we're like, what just and happened? And then you have the most awkward testimonial ever of like, thanks, I made a million dollars. Why does he work with you anymore? Mm. Uh, yeah, exactly. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, the second thing is it, I never understood how important expectations are. And we can do a deeper dive on this later, but there's, there's four things that you want to communicate in terms of expectations, results, mm -hmm. cost, mm -hmm. time, and how much we're going to talk. Those four mm -hmm. things are like the, I guess the four, those four things are like the whole basis of it. And when I started implementing that, like people actually got a better idea of what we were actually doing. And also when you set expectations, like you get to set where the bar is. Like a lawyer told me this really simply where he said, if I tell a client I'm going to get him 15 grand and I get 10, then I'm the biggest idiot in the world. Yep. But if I tell him I'm going to get 10 and we get 15, they're like, my lawyer is a hero. I was only Amazing. supposed to get 10 and we got 15. Um, this has probably been the biggest one is, is we've designed our agency. Like all our communications are designed in advance. So like this has like been a huge part of our retention, which is firstly like the minute you sign up, like one of the things we do is I send an edible arrangement, which has mm -hmm. like a, a salted caramel apple, some cookies, sometimes some chocolate covered strawberries. And they're like for real, the fastest company I've ever seen in the world. They'll be there in like two, three hours from the time you sign a client. Nice. And we have a customized welcome note. So it takes me like five minutes. I spend like 50 bucks, but they've had all these bad experiences with marketing agencies. And they're worried that, you know, you just disappeared to an island in Cuba or whatever. And then all of a sudden there's a knock at the door and they're like, who's this? We also drop in a mail welcome package and that mm. takes like a week to get there. So even though we do it at the same time, it feels like two separate communications. And then we intentionally reach out. And I, I like to compare it to, if you're thinking about the house analogy, mm. imagine you got a phone call from the owner and he says, welcome, I'm so excited to have you. Like, I, I can't believe you bought this house. We're gonna do an amazing job. Just wanna let you know you're like so welcome. And then. A week later, they say, hey, this is your plot of land. They send you a little video and say, so it doesn't look like much right now, but your house is going to go right here and the pool's going to go over there. And then another couple of weeks go by and they say, hey, we just poured the foundation. You can start yep. to see a little bit. And then they say there's a frame and every little update. And when you do those things, it took me a long time to realize that meetings requests are a function of they don't trust you. And it's not necessarily yep. you. It's just they've had so many bad experiences. And so the more you play offense on that communication, there's just, there's nothing for them to ask you about. So there's the meetings just go away. 